for joining me on another episode of The Grid. Today we are in Uptown. I consider this the welcome center of Chicago just because of all the diversity and all the different ethnicities and cultures in the neighborhood. We have both have always independently thought about running a coffee shop, owning a coffee shop one day. Um, and then we noticed the, the lack of a coffee shop on Argyle Street in particular. And we just didn't understand why. We're so close to the CTA, we're so close to the lake. So we saw this space being open and we kind of just decided to go for it. Here's our first drink, which I'm really excited about. It is called Pro Noir and it is our black tea and charcoal latte. Oh my gosh, that right? is so unique. So this is probably one of our most popular coffee drinks. It's okay. pistachio mint, so it is a latte, and this is the ice version. And they're, it's using Oatly, so oat milk, so it's gonna be dairy-free. We have baked goods from Genevieve's Bakery mm -hmm. in Wrigley, and this one is an ube cupcake, which is that purple root. Okay, here we go. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Did I have something on my nose? Just a little. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm here at Foss 777 with my friend Tuyet, who also happens to be the the new CEO at the Vietnamese Association of Illinois. Okay, so she's authentic, and she grew up in Uptown. So I tell, did. Tell us what we got in front of us. Boom cha Hanoi. Wait, say that again. What? Boom cha Hanoi. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> okay, so what is this? Now I know this is pho. This yeah. is your traditional pho. It's got the noodles, rice noodles. Rice noodles, the broth that's typically cooked overnight, mm -hmm. your tripe, and then it also has the beef slices. And then now explain this dish to me. And bung cha hanoi is a northern dish. So you grab a little bit of noodles, okay. and then you just put it in your bowl. And then you want to grab just a little bit of greens. I think yes. Vietnamese cooking is very healthy. It is very healthy. Yes. We eat a lot of greens with everything. Pour a little bit of the okay. meat. It's grilled meat and it's in a like oh a gosh. fish sauce. Look at this meat. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Pork belly and then there's wow. um, like okay, a pork sausage. Okay. So tell me about uh, growing up in Uptown. Back then, people would say that this neighborhood was very dangerous. Really? Right? It was kind of like Wicker Park, Bucktown back in the day. <laughs> it was kind of gritty. Argyle has always been synonymous to me with like a little Vietnam. It feels yeah. like this is where you come to get authentic yes. pho. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is also like a Chinese presence here as well. Yes, our community settled here post Vietnam War after 1975. Okay. The ethnic Chinese um, that are here and the cuisine that you see here on Argyle um, were business owners and people who lived in Vietnam. Uptown is the most, uh, one of the most uh, diverse neighborhoods in the country. I honestly think that uh, Uptown is kind of the Ellis Island of Chicago where we receive a lot of new immigrants and immigrants settling into Chicago. Part of why I came into this role is to really help um, the business community and the area maintain its kind of ethnic identity and cultural identity as being Little Saigon or right yeah. the 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 little Asia and Argyle right. um, that we are and we don't want to lose that and become a Lincoln Park Lakeview right So I'm in Graceland Cemetery. It's been here since 1860. I know it's a little weird that I brought you to a cemetery, but this place is really cool. On top of that, it's also an arboretum. There's gorgeous trees, shrubs, wildlife here. Um, so you can pick up your little map of notable folks that are buried here at the office, and then you can explore. For example, did you know that Daniel Burnham, uh, John Holmes, Marshall Field, George Pullman, even the great Ernie Banks is buried here. So apparently at Dexter Graves, Grave, if you look into the statue's eyes, um, it'll be revealed to you how you will die. Ooh, I don't know if I want to go check this out. This is Inez Clark. She died when she was seven years old in 1880. Um, apparently struck by lightning and they say legend has it that when it's lightning and there's a big thunderstorm the statue disappears Ooh.
We live in Uptown. We've been here for over 20 years. It's our home. It's our community. We love it. We want to provide commerce here. We're entirely plant-based. You know, when we started this restaurant, we, want, we made things that we, that we wanted to eat. We like burgers, we like fries. But we wanted them all to be plant-based and we don't want people to walk in here and say, oh, that's a good vegan burger, that's a good vegan sandwich, you know, that's a good vegan pie. We just wanted people to say, wow, that's just really good food. The K burger, which is our, our seitan, mushrooms, beets, spinach, kale. kale. It tastes um, meaty. It, it tastes meaty. meaty, it's yeah. gratifying. We up in Longacre because our landlord liked what we were doing here. We also want to provide food for omnivores. The heart of Longacre is our Detroit-style pizza. I'm from Detroit, love Detroit-style pizza. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, it's squared and properly done. It's got the sauce on top. Uh, it's not baked onto the crust. my 33rd year no way. on the big chick side. I'll be entering my 16th year of the tweet, running side by side in the same building. I was always drawn to the building. It was a dive bar, really a dive so bar. So it had been a bar before? So, yes, okay. since 1944, it was like a working man's bar. And mm -hmm. then Uptown took a steep downward descent in the 60s, 70s. So I bought it in 1986 when it was still very, very rough. I was working at gay, a gay bar then, a big okay. boys bar in, in Boys Town. The first five years, I would say, I kept it pretty much as a really lovely neighborhood tavern. Mm -hmm. For the people who were already coming here, and then all my gay friends came here. Yes. All my customers were afraid I was going to turn into a lesbian <laughs> bar. I did not. I did not. There were no bars up here, no gay bars. Andersonville hadn't happened. Okay. You know, there was nothing around. So this was a destination for people. and. It felt very daring and exciting to go up here. Ever since the beginning, this bar has always been really diverse. It's always been a welcoming place for straight people if they behave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's been a welcoming place for gay women, gay men, mm -hmm. trans, uh, uh, drag. We do bar food at night, seven nights a week. Wow. And brunch seven days a week. It's a round the clock kind of almost operation. What do you want your legacy to be in terms of? I want it to be kindness. I want it to have created a place of community. I want it to, I know it will live out in the memory for people who are alive and it will be someplace special. To find all of these places we highlighted in today's video, head to the Chicago Sun-Times website. See you next time on The Grid.